Hello everyone and welcome. I am Robin Armbrecht at Really Robin Stamps. You are joining me today for Paper Crafting Playdate. Today is April 1st, 2022, and this is episode 53 of Paper Crafting Playdate. And I am so happy that you are here. And I have a really fun fold for you today. This is another new one for me, so I'm super excited about it, and I think you will enjoy it too. So I'm gonna put you right onto my table here. So, give me a second. All right, let's get that camera all tightened up. Perhaps it will stay where it's supposed to stay today. Welcome everyone. I'm so glad you're joining me. Whether you're watching this live or you're watching it on the replay, it does not matter. I'm just so glad you are here. All right, now I'm gonna pull up your comments so I can see you. Hi, Laura. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Pat. All right, let's see if I can share this into the group. Are Robin's really super stampers? Hey, I think I'm gonna be able to do it. Yes, okay, let's get started. So this is a brand new, hi Stacy. hi Jonna, hi Faye. This is a brand new month. How exciting, is anybody else so glad that March finally said goodbye? And we're moving on to April. March seemed like it was way long, <laughs> really long. Um, so I'm glad that we are into April. And um, even though it's April Fool's Day today, I sure hope nobody gets any tricks played on them. Hi, Pat. All right, so let me show you some fun happy mail first. Look at this fun little rip and flip technique. I love this cute little stripes going with the swirls. It's a beautiful card. This is from a brand new stamper, Mary Ellen, and she did a fabulous job and sent me this thank you note. Thank you so much. I love this. This is so fun. This was a lot of work um, making this little scene here with these cute flamingos. Thank you so much, Sandy, for that great card. And this is from Jonna. Love it. I love this paper. It's so striking. Thank you so much. And look at this one. This is a fun fold. I'm gonna have to incorporate this into a little, little play date, I think. I love this little trifold piece on here. So, so cute, so cute. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate happy mail, just like you do. Okay, guess what happened this week? This dropped into my mailbox. I couldn't be more excited about it. What is it, you ask? It's the new catalog, right? Here's the one that's gonna be all done at the end of April. So we have 29 more days after today, and then this book is no longer um, live. That's why we have the retired list, the last chance products list. So we know all the things that are not going to be staying in this um, catalog and moving into this catalog. So it's kind of a transition month. If you don't have the last chance products list, um, you can use the link that I'll provide to take you to the online store so you can see what's leaving. Some of it's on sale. Um, and then I'll also link you to a PDF where you can actually look at it if you wanna see it up close and personal. So that's exciting. So here we go. Here is the brand new book. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at those flowers on there. I love this. Now I can't show you the inside yet because it's not live yet. So we have to wait until May before I can open this um, on camera. Obviously I have opened it several times myself. In fact, this morning was um, the day that we could pre-order as demonstrators a certain amount of stuff and I went a little nuts this morning, so I'm super thinking about all of the great things that are coming my way, um, hopefully very soon. Speaking of one more thing, so I am going to have a new 
catalog kickoff party, May 4th, all right? So I will also link to a place where you can register telling me you would like me to be the one to send you the brand new catalog. And um, if you wanna be part of the party, um, there's gonna be that option too. Um, and really, it's just gonna be a low cost um, to get your catalog shipped very fast to you. And then you will also have a little um, surprise packet that will have some projects and some bling and, you know, kickoff party stuff. And then there will be an option if you want me to spiral bound your catalog for you as well. So look for that. If you are not on my email list, that is how you're going to, the, the best way for you to get all that information. So um, definitely sign up to get my email so that you'll know about all that stuff. Okay, to the card. So here we go. Jonna, I just clicked in. Yes, I know, I know. If anybody wants to know what one of every single thing we could pre-order costs, I have that total. <laughs> Oh, but it's so exciting. It's so exciting to get new stuff. Just, it, it is, for me, 20 years getting new stuff is still just as exciting as the first time as it is, I know, for you when you get new things sent to you. So this is called a mirror fold card. I'm going to kind of not show you the finished piece first because I want to kind of build it up for you because it's a real wow. So I'm going to show you how to cut it from a full sheet of eight and a half by 11. And so what you're going to do, let me bring this in. Hopefully this will help. Make sure you can see that. Move it down, there we go. So I'm gonna cut this piece at five and a half inches by 10 inches. So you can only get one card per sheet and then you'll have this piece left over. And then this is 11, so we have to trim off a half inch to get 10 and a half. So we'll take off a half inch there and save that scrap as well. So this is gonna be the base of our card. It's actually gonna work like a trifold, um, but it has these two little pop, you know, moving mechanisms that are really cool. So now you're gonna score it. So I'm gonna take my, make sure my cutting blade's out of the way. You're gonna score it at three and a half and seven. So here's three and a half. And I can open up this arm and scoot this down and do seven, but it's really just, easy, just as easy to flip it over and do it again at three and a half. Like that, because that's what those measurements are. So here's three and a half, there's seven. So now I've got this divided into three sections perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead, just scoot that down gonna go ahead and fold on those lines so we can see them. Like that. All right, so now we're gonna create the little mechanism. And what you do, it's really nice because once you've scored this at three and a half and seven, the only measurement you need to remember now is two inches. So looking at this card this way, okay, we're going to start on this left score line and we're going to mark two inches right on the score line. And then we're gonna do the opposite on the right score line, going up at marking it at two inches, okay? Do you see how that mirrors? We go down to and up to. And what we're essentially gonna do, I'll just draw a really crazy line. Um, here, let's do it. Let's do it for real. That way you'll see it this time. You don't have to draw this part. This part you're going to do on your paper cutter, but I want you to see where I'm headed here. So you're going to connect this two inch mark to the corner up here. So it makes this nice wide triangle. And then you're going to do the same thing mirrored down here. But we want this to be a score line. So let me show you how you do this on your paper cutter. You're going to use the track here where you can see, and you're going to put the corner right on the cutting track. And then you're gonna rotate until that dot and the corner, they're both on that line. And so you can see that right through there, right? And then you're gonna start at the dot and go out to the corner, like that. 
and that creates our first score line. Then we're just gonna turn this, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna line up the dot in between, and then we're gonna line up the corner right there, right there, and then we'll score that. Okay, see how that works? So we've got the scored one right here. Now we're gonna mirror it, and we're gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna line up that and then rotate it to line up that dot. And once you do one, as with any kind of fun, fun fold, right? It um, Once you're oriented to the pattern, it's really easy to remember how this works, especially because it's a mirror, right? And it, you can just kind of see it coming together because of the opposites. All right, so here is our finished card base. So we have this marked at two inches and then we scored to the corners. All right, so here is the really cool part. We're going to make this piece go backwards, this piece come forward. And the way that you do that is to just gently bend on that fold. until it starts to move. You don't want to force it. You want it to go nice and easily. And then I'm going to fold it back. Make sure it's straight. And then I'll press on that score line. Okay, so this one we folded back. So this one is going to get folded towards us. Okay, because it's mirror. So this one folded towards. Again, you just kind of want to gently tell it where you want it to go and then fold it together. Line that up. Okay, look at that. So here is our trifold. That makes this cute little card. So the finished size of this is three and a half, because that was our score line, by five and a half. So it's just a little bit narrower than a regular size card, which would be um, four and a quarter. So it's just, but it's the same length. The width is just a little bit narrower. Isn't that cool? Now this, you know, I saw this card um, from another demonstrator. Um, let me, I wrote down her name, so I would not forget it. Her name was Sarah Levin. And then I also watched Wendy Cranford put, put um, these cards together. And at first I was like, that's like, I thought it would probably be kind of difficult. Um, so it was a very happy surprise to see that it was not. It's really very easy. Now comes the part where you decorate it. So we've got our card base um, and you can decorate it however you want. I am going to just very easily cover it with designer series paper. So I thought it would be appropriate to pull in something that's retiring. So I'm gonna set that up there for just a second. So here's what you need. You need two pieces that are three and a fourth by five and a fourth. And here's the, here's to help jog your memory. Do you see how that is just a little bit, it's just a trimmed a quarter inch um, from the size of the card the finished size of the card. So this is three and a fourth by five and a fourth. And you need two of those because one's gonna go here and one's gonna go here. And then you need another piece that size. Um, usually you probably wanna pick white or a neutral because that's gonna go in the middle. So here's basically we're covering these three panels, right, with those pieces. And then we have these little triangles down here um, that we're going to do a coordinating piece of um, designer series paper, and that size is three and a fourth by one and three fourths. And you want two of those. Um, the final thing that you need is a um, belly band, which I didn't cut, but you can make that any color you want. I'll make it the same color as my card base. So I just cut a strip of um, from the piece that I had left over when I made this card base and I'm gonna just trim it down. It's 11 inches now, and I want it to be a little bit shorter than that. 
want it to be about eight and a half, nine inches. It'll overlap a little bit and that's fine because it's a belly band. Okay, so let me show you how you measure to cut these because that looks a little complicated, right? I mean, this would be the part where I would get, you know, like, do we have to do math here? Um, and then get frustrated, but it's really very easy. You're gonna use the same two inch mark. So let's do this one first. So my two inch mark is on this side. So I'm gonna just measure two inches up from that corner, okay? And then we'll end up cutting to that corner. And then for this one that we want to cover here, we're gonna measure two inches down. So again, it's just mirrored like that. And then this one in the middle, you're gonna do it on both. I'm gonna do two inches on this side from the bottom and two inches from the top. Make sense? So let's cut those. So again, here's my two inch mark. So I'm just gonna line that up with the nearest opposite corner basically. And cut that off. And then we'll do this one. This is a great way to showcase um, the designer series paper and how it coordinates together. So you can pull out a package and generally have any package, and then you generally have a bunch of things that already go together. And then we'll do this one. Here's my two inch mark, and we'll cut that off. Like that. All right, so for our coordinating pieces, we just have to cut these in diagonals. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to cut them opposite of each other. So if I do it this way on one, I have to do it this way on the other, and that's how we get those opposite tri um, triangles there. So we'll do one this way. Hello, Amy. Hi, Michelle. Okay, so there's one, and then we'll do this one the opposite way. Check my work here. My, yes, that's the opposite way. And then we've got that. So that's not too bad, right? And then you've got these pieces in the white, which you can put together if you are smarter than, there we go. Um, smarter than me. <laughs> you can put them together and you can use them on another card. Um, you can, it is possible to use this on the same card, um, but you have to, you have to trim this piece. You have to take off just like a quarter of an inch off this side to make it the right size. I don't know mathematically why that is, but it, you can use that same piece if you want to. You just have to um, play with it a little bit. So now our job is to glue them all down. What does everybody have going on today on this Friday? Leave me a comment, tell me something that you are gonna do this weekend. Whether you get to get outside where you're at or are you doing working on your taxes <laughs> like this girl is? That is going to be my job this weekend. In fact, I was, um, I'm invited to attend a little crafting retreat with some friends and we rented a conference room and we're going to just hole up and craft. I will be doing my taxes, but I will be doing them amongst the happy sounds of crafting. So I'm very excited about that. Ah, John is gonna work on her product, sh product share that she got. Awesome. Yep, those pretty blue waves of the inspiration ocean, whatever that paper is called, are so pretty. So very pretty. 
Okay, there we go. Make sure that's all the corners are down and then anywhere that there's a little pencil mark you can just go back and erase if you are using paper where you can see that so closed it's going to look like that and then when you open Liz is working, but you're excited to go home and try this card. Thank you. Nice and all. Cheryl, I know. I know. I like the retreat idea, too. I wish I was bringing along my crafting supplies, though. Ugh. All right. So let's finish this with our belly band. So again, this is just an inch by eight and a half. I like to have my belly bands close um, or like I, I attach them to the ends to each other on the front, especially if I know that I'm going to be putting a focal point on there, then that way, um, it will be, my little seam here will be covered up. But if that's not the case, you can always have it work in the back. Now, when you make a belly band, you could try to measure and score, but that hardly ever works out. Um, for me, um, trying to figure out, you know, the thickness of whatever it is you're wrapping it around, it's really best to just kind of manually wrap it around and you want to make sure that it will slide. So you don't want it to be super tight. So usually once I get that figured out where that is going to sit, then I will kind of make those score lines a little bit neater. But when you glue it together, make sure you've got it on your project. That way it's got the true, um, the true, you know, width is already taken into account. So I'm going to put some glue there and some glue there. And we'll line that up and let that sit for a minute. I like to just take one of my heavier blocks and set that right on top to hold it down while we're doing our rest of our work. So we're gonna make a little um, shape to go on the belly band. And I thought it would be great to use these stitched so sweetly shapes because those are being retired and we'll pull out our baby boss I know lots of you took advantage of the sale last month and you got a little baby boss for yourself Let's line that up. So let me show you this, because this is one of the important things to know about this machine. The plates are a lot skinnier than the regular machine. And so one of the things that helps when you're sliding your sandwich through is to make sure that these plates are staggered. So you wouldn't want to have them all lined up when you're using this one. So just kind of have them staggered a little bit, and that's going to help your stuff to go through much easier. piece here and let's decorate it. So talking about some of the things that are retiring, this die set is retiring. Boo-hoo, that's a good one. I love that. Um, this stamp set and die bundle is not retiring. This is going to be in the new book, so you will have another opportunity to um, get this one if you haven't already. However, this paper designer series paper never carries over. So if you were looking at this paper thinking, oh, I'd really like to um, 
use that, then you definitely want to get, want to get the hand pen designer series paper before that goes away. So I'm going to take one of these cute little flower images here and I'm going to stamp it kind of off to the side. like that. The thing I love about this stamp set is you can fill in the flowers. So I'm going to pull out the little flower and leaf images. And then we'll use our colored inks to color it in. Let's see, are you dry? Good. All right, so we're going to use pink for the big flower. And then we'll use pale papaya for the small flower. And then we'll use our same color as our card base, which is mint macaron. Use that to fill in the leaf. And there's actually two leaves that are large and then one that's a little smaller so we'll use the smaller one so now we've just colored that in that could not be easier right i love to stamp that two-step stamping method how about you and then we'll add a greeting so my favorite um, sentiment from hand pen petals is this feel better friend I don't have anything else that says that. Just such a great little greeting. Okay, so our last job is to just attach that. I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna pop it up, but you could definitely pop it up. I feel like this card is already kind of thick, so I'm going to just keep it a little bit flatter. Normally I would want to use dimensionals on that. And then we'll just center that right on the belly band. All right, what do you guys think about the mirror fold? Think you can try this one? I think that, um, you know, once, like I said, once you do it once and you kind of make yourself that little pattern, you will uh, not have any trouble reproducing it over and over again. It's, it's pretty easy. You saw how fast that came together, right? And who's not going to be feeling better when they get this fun little happy f card with lots of room to write or to do more stamping? Um, you could, you know, if you didn't want to put designer series paper here, you could do some more stamping. Um, I think I have an example of that, but so let me show you some more examples. And then we're going to talk about 12 by 12 paper. So here's one with the Expressions in Ink Designer Series paper. This is also retiring, but the dies and the stamp set um, called Artistic Expressions are going to continue to be in the catalog, so that's good. So here I just put this little die cut on the belly band. Yeah, Sarah, the, I'm sad that paper's retiring too. The hand pen's beautiful. Definitely going to get an extra pack of that. So this is just a cute little birthday card. And here's an example where I just recut the one that came off and added that down there and then just added different ones in the middle. So lots and lots of ways you can change this around and fill up those triangles. Now here's another one with hand pen. This was my practice card. that one and here's one with the you're a peach designer series paper using all different patterns so this one's different because you can see two different um, pieces from the front so you've got some decisions to make when you pull out your paper do you want it to look the same or do you want it to look different because it's great both ways, right? This one, you can just see how it looks when you've got all the different 
Now, when you go to do this, because we're human <laughs> when we're cutting, you may not always get it exact, you know, the exact angle um, the same as what you scored, right? But it's going to be very close. And as you can see, I mean, here it's getting a little bit, it starts skinnier and it gets longer here. I'm just talking about this little space. But with the finished card, it's it doesn't matter. You're going to, it's a wow. And when you look at the whole piece as a whole, um, that, that little difference there in the seam won't matter. And the last one with our waves of inspiration, pretty wave. So this one I did two different papers. And then I also put white. I took the um, triangles that I cut off of here and I added them here so I could do some more stamping, like I mentioned. Sorry, I don't know why I'm holding that so far away. Let me hold that down. There we go. So these are super fun, super fun. But I wanted to show you kind of quickly how you can also make this in a different size. I think this is a perfect little size and it's great if you're using um, cardstock as your base because of the size of our cardstock, which is eight and a half by 11. All right, so let's just put these to a side for a second. One of the things you can do is make this with 12 by 12 paper, because I know a lot of you are scrapbookers and you have your cardstock is 12 by 12. So instead of cutting it down, you can make a version that will still fit in an envelope with um, 12 by 12 paper. So here are the dimensions if you're gonna use either design a series paper or cardstock. You wanna cut it five and a half. So it's the same width as the other, um, the other design but this time you leave it 12 inches, okay? And we're gonna score it into thirds, so that means we're gonna score at four inches and eight inches. Or you can just flip it around and you can do four inches on both sides. But this works pretty much exactly the same. But you're gonna already have all that pretty, you know, paper on your design. So let's just go through the process one more time. We've got your three panels, so you're gonna measure on the score line on the right, you're gonna measure down two inches and make a mark, and then you're going to measure up from the right panel um, score line up two inches. So down two inches, up two inches, and then again, you would be scoring on those. Now the thing with 12 by 12 paper, if you're using a paper trimmer that is like Stampin' Ups where it has this size here, um, it's, it's really difficult, if not impossible to, let me turn it this way so you can see, to do it the same way because of the length of paper is just long enough it's going to get stuck here so one of the other ways you can do this and this works for the other kind of card too so so here's my mark this is the bottom you can just line up your ruler between your mark in the corner and then use a stylus tool and make your score line right up against the ruler and this works really well too. And then we'll do this one. So you've got options. You can even use the um, tip of your bone folder that will make a score line too. All right, and then you do it the same way. This one goes backwards. And then this one comes forward. Don't you love it? 
This is kind of like last week's fun fold in that this, if you use the designer series paper for this, then you can um, showcase both sides and it's really pretty. Really nice to be able to use and see both sides, especially when you've got this cute gingham. Okay, so there is the designer series paper version. And really everything is the same. Um, the same kind of pieces that you need to, to cover it. You just want to make them a little bit wider. So the length is the same. Let me show you the first directions here. This is with cardstock. So the length of these pieces are still five and a fourth because your card is still five and a half inches long, but you want to make it a little bit wider to um, because the card is actually four inches wide instead of three and a half. And obviously your belly band would have to be a little bit longer too. So you can use a piece of, of 12 by 12 um, trimmed off a little bit like that. So you can have, so let me show you a finished one. Here's with the, the pansy paper. So this one I covered everything but the front so that I could have two different um, colors, right? Isn't that fun? And you can still embellish it. So it is a little bit uh, flimsier than a regular card. I mean, there's enough layers there that it's not, you know, um, that's how it stands up, by the way. It's not gonna fall apart or anything like that, but it is a little bit thinner. So if you wanted to, you could adjust your dimensions and you could cut this at five and a fourth by 12 and then just, you know, trim this down to five. And, and then you could attach a, you know, one quarter sheet on the, on the back like this. And that would help to give the card some stability. You would just attach it to this back here like that. Let's go ahead and do that because I meant to have that one ready to go. This is a great way to um, use up some designer series paper if you've got some that's been sitting around for a while and you want to kind of use big chunks of it. You can get two cards from one piece of 12 by 12 if you're making the base the 12 by 12. So here I just put some different kinds of designer series paper, including one that was a little bit lighter so I could still write a message there. Okay, and then here's one that is made with um, just 12 by 12 cardstock. This is Bermuda Bay. Like that. What do you guys think of this idea? Pretty fun. I hope that you um, are excited about this new fold. and can think of some paper that you wanna jump in and use as soon as you get home, Liz, or as soon as you have a chance to craft. Let me throw them all out here again. And then I'm just gonna remind you, um, if you forget to check, once I finish um, uploading today's live video to YouTube, then I uh, put together a blog post with the directions plus this as a PDF so that you can um, print this off if you'd like to for to have um, in your craft room as you make something so here's there's usually pictures and everything of what we did so you can do it step by step some people are visual learners right some people are auditory learners so it's nice to have all the different ways that you can um, learn thank you Jonna this is pretty fun. I hope that you um, try making one right away. And um, I'm going to get my taxes done this weekend so that I can get back to um, doing the stuff that I really like and get that business stuff out of the way. <laughs> um, hi, Nydia. Thank you, Sarah. You like the Bermuda Bay? Absolutely. It's so bright. It's so bright and happy. It's a good one. Yeah, I don't know which one's my favorite. I kind of liked this one because I did that stamping on the inside and I thought, well, that's that's kind of fun. You know, you don't usually typically stamp on 
triangle. So I liked that one a lot, but I really liked this designer series paper one too. So that you could see all those fun, fun papers. So I don't know. All right, you guys, thank you so much for um, watching this video. And again, check all the links, join my email list if you haven't already so that you get notification about all the things coming up. And um, we will keep talking about this catalog party and the new catalogs and how you can get a new catalog. So I just ordered them today. So hopefully they'll get to me next week and then I can start mailing them out. So um, yes, Cheryl, you need to try this, right? ASAP. This is a fun one. Yeah. Sorry, Nitty, I was early today, but I told everybody I'm going on a little crafting retreat this afternoon, and so I had to um, had to get the work done early. All right, thank you so much, you guys. You have a great day, and I'll talk with you soon. Bye.